Hi friends. Well, I got some responses on my question about the solar and how it works if you have more than one charge controller. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Uh, as I said in the video where I asked the question, uh, will one charge controller sense the voltage from the other charge controller and limit its output? Uh, as I said in that video, I got some answers that said yes and some answers that said no. Uh, curiously, the ones that said no uh, gave me long dissertations with all of the appropriate uh, terms of the science of solar power, like state of charge and internal resistance and AGW or AWG wire uh, size and so on. Uh, if I had to sum up all the answers, I would say that the people who think they know what they're talking about said, no, it doesn't work that way. And the people who had to actually think about it because they're not confident said, yes, I believe you're correct, Jerry, that it does work that way. And by work that way, I mean, does one charge controller sense the voltage coming from another charge controller and limit its output? Well, I've done some more experimenting. And let me show you a picture of why this is a little more complicated for me and people with 40-foot uh, diesel pushers than it might be for somebody throwing a couple of panels up on top of their van. Uh, here's a picture of one of my uh, electrical bays. And I have a generator. I have a 3,000-watt pure sign inverter that has charging algorithms in it and the algorithms are different whether it's coming from 220 volt shore power or it's coming from the 7.5 kilowatt generator or it's coming from the original 100 watt solar panel or the new 600 watts of solar panels with a separate charge controller. Um, there are battery isolators and more monitoring systems than you uh, have on a single system. I have tested this to see how it works. And here's a couple of my tests. First of all, let's talk about how a voltage regulator works in a car. Here's my test. I've hooked a voltage meter, a voltmeter, up to my car battery. This is a Suzuki Sidekick. And it's showing 12.5 and the motor is not running. So as I start the motor, left-handed, you see it dropped to 11.2 and now the alternator has cooked, kicked in and it's charging the battery at 14.3. What's going on is that the voltage regulator is allowing the alternator to send as much current as possible to the batteries. If we watch this for a while, the voltage would go down, and more importantly, what you're not seeing is that amperage would go down. And uh, as the battery got more and more charged, the voltage regulator lets the alternator send less and less amperage to the batteries so that the batteries are not overcharged. And that's a voltage regulator in a car. A solar panel needs a charge controller to do exactly the same thing. And as we turn the engine off, the voltage drops back to 13.2 which is just a surface charge in the battery and it takes a half an hour to an hour for that to kind of go away and all of the cells to equalize so that you get a true reading in a truly charged 12 volt battery is about 12.7. That's what the voltage regulator does. Okay, here's another test. I turned off the 600 watts of solar on my roof um, 
I have a switch between the solar panels and the MPPT charge controller. And I put the fuse back into the uh, house side of the original PWM charge controller. So here's what happened. Here is 3.4 amps coming into my batteries uh, from a 100 amp solar charger. And that's the original that came with the RV. The Bluetooth doesn't come all the way to the front. But back here, I have shut off my 600 watts. And so you can see that it's not producing anything. It's shut off. Now I'm going to turn that on. I have a switch up here. And the solar panels, 600 watts of them, are put into the system. And we can watch this. It's putting out 43 volts. The amperage is building. It's putting out 28, no, oh, it's jerking around because it's fighting with the other solar charge controller. This one will win. There, it's putting out 14.5 uh, volts, 8.1 amps, and it's in bulk. Let's go back up here and see what the other solar charge controller is doing. The other solar charge controller is at zero. Why is that? It's because this solar charger is sensing the 14 volts coming from the other charge controller. So why am I talking about this in the first place? Um, I have a uh, refrigerator that can run on either gas or electric and it used to be my um, uh, um, way of doing things that I would run my refrigerator on electric while I was going down the road uh, if I'm doing days and days worth of travel so that I'm using the electricity produced by my uh, diesel engine rather than my propane and it says in the manual that that's quite okay to do and it worked great after I installed the first 300 watts of solar, it became evident to me that my batteries were not fully charged when I would arrive at a destination for the evening. And it was a question in my mind, what's going on? Why aren't my uh, batteries being fully charged? I've been driving all day, they should be at float. Well, I would arrive somewhere and they weren't. And it occurred to me that perhaps the voltage regulator of the diesel engine, I'm talking about 350 horsepower Cummings, uh, which has plenty of alternator power to charge whatever, um, is not charging because it, the voltage regulator of the engine is sensing the voltage of the solar array. So I started doing testing, and sure enough, if you have a charging source from somewhere else, the solar shuts down. Now, I haven't actually been able to fully and um, in my mind effectively test whether starting the engine shuts down the solar array or the solar array shuts down the engine's voltage regulator. But when I arrive at a destination on a sunny day, my batteries will be charged. If I arrive at a destination on a cloudy day, <laughs> my batteries won't be charged. And that's not because the solar didn't fully charge them. It's because the solar did not allow the engine to charge them. My test, and I, since I started figuring this all out, I haven't driven for a whole day. 
My next test will be to shut off the solar panels and then drive for the day and see if the engine has charged the batteries. That's my next test, but I haven't done it yet. So weigh in if you think you know something about this because I'm very curious about it. Um, and for those of you who did weigh in as solar experts, and one in particular whom I don't need to say who it is, but he uh, proceeded to give me a whole bunch of uh, interesting and correct information about um, what he knows and about the book that he wrote. And, uh, and then he showed me pictures, he sent me pictures of uh, TriStar um, MPPT charge controllers, like 20 of them hooked up in a row. And five and six hundred dollar charge controllers have separate uh, leads that go in to measure the voltage accurately so they can work together. I understand how that works. You need a shunt in there so that it can measure the voltage of the battery accurately and not just take the voltage at the terminals which might be from anywhere might be from the battery might be from another solar array might be from the generator might be from being plugged into shore power might be from the diesel engine running you don't know if you have separate wires and a charge controller that costs between five and six hundred dollars uh, it's quite possible to have charge controllers in series. But for those people who are getting sold two and three charge controllers to put on top of their van with uh, three panels, um, I'm not convinced. Does one charge controller look at the voltage at the battery terminals that might be coming from some other charging source and limit its output? That's the question. Oh, and speaking of the experts, um, let's talk about batteries and battery banks hooked up in parallel for a moment. Um, and when I say experts, I'm including people who write books about solar power and people who write books about hooking up batteries. And I'm talking about people who sell batteries and hook them up in RVs or RV manufacturers who hook up batteries in RVs in battery banks. I cannot tell you how many battery banks I've seen that are hooked up in a less than optimal way. And so uh, in one of my comment conversations on my channel with one of the experts, I suggested as politely as I possibly could that one of the illustrations in his book um, uh, might indicate a better way to hook up batteries in parallel. And of course I got some more uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, dissertation of words proving that he knew what he was talking about and if the wires between the batteries were big enough and the resistance was low enough uh, that the internal resistance da 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 da. Well, um, I don't want to uh, pretend like I know everything about batteries, but uh, some of those experts remind me of a story about Mark Twain. Uh, Mark Twain uh, was quite well known for using a lot of bad language, and his wife didn't like that very much, and so one time she decided that she would uh, repeat all of the bad words that Mark Twain used. And she let out a string of them. And he looked at her and he said, My dear, you have the words, but not the music. A lot of the experts that I have read and a lot of the experts I have talked to uh, have the words, but not the music. There's, a, there's an old proverb that says, When the student is ready, uh, the teacher will arrive. And... Um, some of these experts have not figured out who is the grasshopper. Anyway, let me show you how to correctly hook up a uh, bank of batteries in parallel and why you should do it that way. Let me explain what I'm talking about. 
Uh, the black tape up here is just so that the paper doesn't move while I'm writing on it, yeah, so that it doesn't get out of the camera picture. Uh, these are three batteries in parallel, and this is a positive charging source and a negative charging source. And um, it could be the load source if the batteries are being used or it's the charging source if they're being charged. And for the purposes of the illustration, let's assign um, a number to each of the internal resistances. Wires have resistance. Let's just give that a 1 for each of these sections of wire. And batteries have internal resistance. Let's give them a 2. Now, that's not an equal ratio. Batteries always have much more um, internal resistance than the proper gauge of wires. But, the electrons are always going to take the easiest path. So let's count where the electrons have to go in terms of the internal resistance of their path. They start over here and they go in through this battery and they go out there. That charges that battery and the resistance is the value of 2. If we go to the second battery, the electro electrons have to go from here to here, that's a 1, through the battery, that's a 2, that's a total of 3, back up this wire, that's another 1, so that's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4. So the electrons, if they went that through that battery, would have an internal resistance of 4. This battery would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So an internal resistance for the electrons of 6. Electrons will always take the easiest path. It's like trying to herd cats. You cannot make a cat or an electron go this way. It will always go this way because it takes the path of least resistance. So, how does this battery get charged? If the electrons won't go through it, it discharges this battery. This battery charges this battery this battery charges this battery. Now, I'm going to go around here to the other side of the table and show you the proper way to do it. Don't hook it up up here. Hook the positive down here at the opposite corner. And it doesn't matter if you go positive to negative or if you go negative to positive as long as the internal resistance winds up to be what we're going to count now. If the electrons want to go from here, I should have drawn that line up there. If the electrons want to go from there to there, they go one, two, three, four. That's a resistance of four. If they want to go through this battery, they go one, two, three, four. That's an internal resistance of four. If they want to go to this battery, they go 1, 2, 3, 4, and they're there. That's an internal resistance of 4. All the internal resistances are equal, which means that they will all charge and discharge equally. Why is this important? Well, because if you do it this way, this battery and this battery and this battery don't get used equally. Now, the chemistry of a battery charging and discharging at the same time, which is what these two are doing, uh, that's very complicated. And I'm not here to explain that, nor am I going to pretend that I fully understand it. But in terms of internal resistance, this is the proper way to do it, not this. And I can't tell you how many RVs I've seen hooked up in a parallel battery configuration with the electrons going through the first battery and the second battery and the third battery and however many being charged by the other batteries ahead in the line. You know, I took my camera down off the tripod, but before we um, pick up the paper here, 
I was talking about charging. Let's talk about discharging for a second. I'm just holding the camera now, so forgive my shaking. But when you're using the batteries then, this is the battery you're using. Because the electrons, again, flow through the easiest pass. This battery discharges. This one picks up the difference and flows electrons from this one to this one. Same way with this one. This one discharges. This one flows electrons or uh, amperage and voltage from this one to this one. So what happens is that this battery gets used a lot more than the rest of them. And here's the deal. No battery bank is ever any better than the worst one in the bank. In parallel. It's like a chain. Chain isn't any better than its weakest link, and neither is a battery bank any better than its weakest battery. And if you wear out the top one before you wear out the rest of them, it doesn't matter if the rest of them are any good. Now, while I'm thinking about it, that's the same reason that the Tele never put uh, new batteries in parallel with old batteries, because your new batteries will never perform any better than your old battery. Would you ask me? I said, is this, is this trash? Is this something you need? No, I was using that to make a video. It's, uh, oh. it's about... Um, no, wait, 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 wait. Was that what you were talking about all this time? Yeah. That chart? Yeah. Do you want to hear my two-note song? Sure, everybody likes your songs. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so boring. Is that all you do is color? Yeah. Got a problem with it? You're in your pajamas. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's dark out. It's which almost Which means you didn't, you didn't get dressed today. Oh. <laughs> no, it's 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> well. Is that all you do is color and sing? Whoop-dee-doo. Whoop-dee-doo. na 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 that's all I do. <laughs> hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.